What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid and I made another terrible life choice here. This time for Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age. Just like before with my overpowered series, the idea is to do everything that the game allows to get as completely overpowered as humanly possible as early as possible. In this case, we're going to break ourselves before the Lusu Mines. And if you didn't know, Lusu Mines is about two hours into the actual story of the game. So that doesn't really give us much time to break things, does it? Well, I'm afraid to say you're wrong. That's actually more than enough time. Now, Final Fantasy XII was Square Enix's first like, big major change to the Final Fantasy series. Battles become real-time with fully controlled movement, characters had AI tactics, albeit pretty bad ones if you don't know the tricks of using them, and sadly, Final Fantasy XI's RNG. In Final Fantasy XII, absolutely everything revolves around RNG which stands for Random Number Generator. This is both good and bad for us. It's good because it lets us get some really amazing things early on. It's bad because, well, it's RNG, and I'm sure we've all experienced some terrible RNG moments, so you know exactly why it's bad. Luckily though, people got so tired with Final Fantasy XII's nightmarish RNG that a major effort to effectively rig the RNG table was developed, and this is going to come in very handy later on in the video. Just a selfish little plug here as well guys, these overpowered videos take an ungodly amount of time to make, so if you could leave a like and a comment I would greatly appreciate it because it helps so much with YouTube's algorithm. And of course, there's also my Twitter and Facebook links down in the description. Now, first of all though, a few things to note. One, I will not be explaining absolutely everything you can do in the game. Only what is needed to be overpowered. So don't expect to get 100% in the game just following this, because a lot of early stuff is missed out. And two, a lot of things featured in this video are only possible in the Zodiac Age version of the game. However, it does work on all platforms such as PC, Switch, PS4 and Xbox One. Everything here was recorded on the PS4 if you're curious. Now, without further ado, let's jump into how overpowered can you be before lose your mind in Final Fantasy XII. Now, to start things off, and arguably the most important thing to do altogether, which you might find a little weird, but trust me, it'll come in handy and save literally hundreds of hours of frustration. And that is, while playing as Rex during what is basically the tutorial stage, you will eventually reach a save point on a stairwell. Make sure to make two saves here. We are going to need to be able to load this save later to manipulate the RNG encounter. So absolutely make sure you don't overwrite a save here. Now that you have your save, continue on with the game until you get a chance to give Vaughn a class. You can do this just before the first main mission, which has you hunting the rogue tomato. For the sake of being as overpowered as possible, we're effectively going to be making three characters insanely strong while completely ruining Van and Pinello. So when you give Van a class, it's super important that you make him a knight. Like seriously, we need to be a knight, don't make him anything else. Next up, you want to play the game normally until you get Pinello. You want to make her a knight as well. I know it sounds weird having two knights, but trust me here, you'll see why soon. Now, once Pinello joins the party, continue the game and complete the Sunstone story mission, but do not return to Low Town. Now, I know what you're thinking. What's so overpowered about two knights, and why hasn't there been any grinding or good items yet? Well, it's coming. Next up, you want to unlock all the monographs. To do this, we need to read the wanted poster in the Sand Sea Bar 40 times. Beat the hunt mark, Fex Terrier. However, we'll do this specific one later, but grab the bill now while you're here. Speak to the magic shop 25 times. Speak to the armor shop 15 times. 
speak to the weapon shop 30 times, and finally, you need to speak to any shop for a total of 100 times. But because we've already spoken to the armor shop, weapon shop, and magic shop a bunch, you just need to speak to any shop another 30 times. Doing this will unlock all of the monographs for purchase, but they're really expensive, so how are we going to get them? Simple, we're going to get rich quick. So, the first step to getting rich is simple. Save your game and go into trial mode. Make sure you load the save you just made. Now, on the first floor, open up a chest to the left which contains an item called the Diamond Armlet. This piece of gear sells for 6,000 gil, and we can get them in infinite supply. All you need to do is finish the first floor of trial mode, then quit out uh, after the game auto saves. When loading floor 2, load your auto save to be put back into the normal story, and save again. Now just repeat this process until you have 33 diamond armlets. This way we can sell 30 of them for 180,000 gil, which covers all monographs and some items we need to buy later, along with 3 to equip on characters, which we will absolutely need later for two reasons, but more on this later. So, in other words, get 33 armlets, sell 30 of them and buy all the monographs, then save the leftover gil for later. Just note, however, you don't actually need to get 33 of them, because we don't technically have to buy all the monographs right now, and we're going to get more gil soon. At the very least though, you want 8 armlets, 5 to sell and 3 to keep. If you choose to buy some monographs, just make sure to keep 30,000 gil spare. So, regardless of how many armlets you choose to get though, you'll notice you have a bunch of license points from killing the rats over and over again in stage 1. Now it's time to spend some of them. We want to unlock a few specific nodes in this order. Accessory 3, Heavy Armor 1, plus 70 HP, plus 110 HP, plus 190 HP. Get these at a minimum and keep all the remaining points. Next we, uh, sorry, next, we need to head over to an Albina Fortress. There is a vendor here that we can get Phoenix Downs from, and we need 99 of these, because we're going to be doing something called the Dustier Trick. Doing this will level us up a bit, and also give free LP a kill, as well as a bunch of good rare drops to sell for more gil, which we can use to buy more Phoenix Downs to carry on doing this. Now, the goal here is simple. 1000 LP and some levels. The levels will come while grinding the LP though, so it's only worthwhile getting the 1000 LP. And yes, I know it's a more efficient to do this after Pinello leaves. We need Pinello as well though for something later, so we have to do it now. Okay, so once you have the Phoenix Downs, head back to Rabanasta and go to the Wester Sand area. Make sure to save in Rabanasta first though, and also make sure to have the fast forward turned off, have the battle mode set to wait, and have the battle speed set to the slowest. Now, the idea here is simple. We're going to spawn a monster called Dustier, which will spawn in a specific area of the Wester Sand when your main character has less than 10% HP. The area in question is the Corridor of Sand. Once you enter this area with less than 10% HP, Dustier will spawn. Next, you want to throw a Phoenix down at him, and then straight away hit X again to bring up the command prompt. Because we're set to wait in the, con uh, in the config, the game basically freezes here, giving us some much needed time. You see, the XP and LP is added to our total and monster drops are still dropped in this frozen state. The difference is, however, the monster itself doesn't get tagged as being dead. So the idea is to kill the monster, press X to freeze, if the monster dropped an item, press circle and run quickly to get into range to pick up the monster drop, and then press X again to freeze the game. Once you have the drop picked up, press circle to close the menu and leave the area as fast as possible. If you did it right, the next time you enter the area, Dustier should spawn again, allowing you to infinitely farm him. Do this until you use all 99 Phoenix Downs. If you're too slow at running away and you see his EXP actually pop up, then you need to return to Robin Asta, or move two screens away before he will respawn again. 
If Dustier is too far from the exit though, then ignore item drops and focus on respawning him to keep your chain. Unlike me, because in the video you're watching now, I lost my chain three times here because I'm stupid. Anyway, after 99 Phoenix Downs, you should have an extra 297 LP and be about level 20. So, head back to Rabanasta and sell all the drops you get, so that's all the flame staffs and all books of Orgain. Okay, so we have Gil and we have some weak diamond armlets, while being just level 20. Not very overpowered, you say? Don't worry, I got you. It's time to start breaking things now. First, save the game and go back into trial mode and get to stage 3. On this floor, there is a monster called Flowering Cactoid, and he has a rare steel called the Kakata, which is actually the 5th best sword in the entire game. And the only class that can equip this is a knight. Now, do you see why we made Van and Pinello both knights? This has 92 attack, and it confuses monsters as well. Pretty nifty, right? Well, I'm sorry to say you need two of these. One for Van and one for Pinello. Oh, and uh, did I mention their steel chance is really low? Sorry, but this stage might take a while. If you don't get one though, quit to the menu and reload your autosave to try again. Once you have a Kikata, just clear stage three, quit on stage four, load your autosave and then save in the normal game again to keep your Kikata. Once this is done, just go back into trial mode for one more of them. Also, you can get more diamond armlets each trip since you have to clear stage one and two each time anyway. So, you have two Kakatas but can't equip them yet because we need about 1000 LP to do so. Which of course means now we're going to farm LP. The way we're going to do this is simple. We're going to run around at the Esther Sand near Nalbina, killing absolutely everything in sight. If you see Nukbet though, then run for your life. Also, make sure to set in the, uh, the config battle option to active so you can menu while running. Uh, now... While you want to be doing this, you want to be moving along at the license board in this order. Swords 1, Shields 1, Swords 2, Shields 2, Swords 3, Shields 3, Swords 4, Shields 4, Swords 5, Shields 5, Swords 6, Shield 6, Sword 7, Shield 7, Swords 8, Shield Block, ha, bet you thought I was going to say uh, Shields 8, didn't you? And Swords 9, finally, plus 310 HP, Spellbound, and Shield Block. The next one is finally the Kakata License. So, if you get bored running around the Aster Sand, then you can either do the Dustier trick or use Trial Mode. If you use Trial Mode, then just keep fighting and advancing until you die. Once you finally die, load your autosave into the normal game, save once again so you keep all the LP you just earned, and then head back into Trial Mode from that new save. As for me, I do the Esther Sand and then the Dustier Trick because more XP is more XP and that means a higher level which will come in handy soon. Now, it's time to tackle Fex Terrier and unlock the final monograph. Head to the Sand Sea Pub and pick up the Hunt mission. If you didn't do so earlier, and speak to Ghastly in the bar to begin the mission itself. Next, head to the west of sand and go south. Vexteria is located at the bottom south of this area. Defeat it, and we can now buy the final monograph. Now, unequip Pinello and continue the story. Once Pinello leaves, this is the best time to grind XP early on. You see, XP is shared between characters in FF12, but all characters join the party at a higher level than Van, which means Van leveling solo is the most efficient for him, and it also increases the levels of all future party members, which of course means we're going to do the Dustier trick to get to level 99. Be warned though, this takes forever. To go from level 1 to 99 it takes 13,741 Phoenix Downs, or 139 trips with 99 Phoenix Downs, or a casual 70 hours. If you don't farm here, there is one more spot to farm, but it takes a lot longer. 
Now, I messed up here and advanced too quickly, so I had to resort to the backup leveling method of farming, the dinosaur in the Ester Sand, and then once I was stronger, moved on to farming the Entite in the Wester Sand, which is why it took me far, far longer. Once max level though, continue the story. Eventually, Fran and Balfiar will join the party. Now, make Fran an archer. This is important later, and make Balfiar a time mage. And continue on. Just remember to set gambits up. So, continue the story now all the way until Bosch becomes a permanent member. Make him a knight and equip him with the Kakata, which we took off of Penalo previously. Next up, we're going to get the strongest weapon in the game, the Satan Grat. And yes, I'm aware I've likely pronounced that wrong, but do you guys remember how I said to make an extra save with Rex way back at the start of the game? It's time to use it now. So head to the Aerodome and board a flight to Nalbina Fortress. Equip the Diamond Armlet on Vaughn, uh, uh, sorry, all the character you run around with, and then go to the roof of the ship. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that guys. Okay, go to the roof of the ship with the diamond armlet already equipped. Next, completely close the game to reset the RNG counter completely. This is super important. Next, load up your rec save and proceed to cast cure on yourself. We need to heal for exactly 88, 97 and 90 in this exact order. Once you get all three cures with these exact numbers, then pause the game and quit by pressing square. If you don't get these after about 5 minutes, close the game completely and try again with a new RNG seed. Now load your autosave where you're on the roof of the airship. Run to the middle of the upper floor and there should be an invisible chest here. Now, move your camera to the right and watch the person moving up and down the stairs. Count how many times he comes up the stairs. On the fourth time, as soon as he reaches the top, open the chest. Just a note, if he's already at the top when you get to the chest, then automatically count that as one. If you have the diamond armor equipped, you should get the Satan Grat, which, just an FYI, if you try to get this normally, it's a one in one hundred thousand chance now why do you want this thing though okay so it has a casual 224 attack the longest range of any weapon in the game however this has been nerfed in the latest update so the range is not as far as it used to be but it's still incredibly far and finally you don't need a license to equip it which means everybody can use it regardless of their job. So go ahead and do this a minimum of three times for free Satan Grats, or go the extra mile and get six of them, one for each person. But you only need three. Also, you need any form of arrows to actually equip these. Now, once you finish your flight, head back to Robin Aster and fly to Nelbina again. I should probably also mention you can only get the Satan Grat when flying from Robin Oster to Nalbina. Okay, so at this point we have three of the strongest weapon in the game. We are max level, so we're kind of already overpowered, right? Nope, not yet. Being able to one-shot 99.9% .9 of the game isn't good enough if we get one-shot ourselves. And since we have the best weapon, we can't just use some trashy tier armor. Instead, we're going to go and get the best armor right now. Before that though, we need to recruit two more characters. So head to the Sand Sea Bar and find Balfiar and Fran. Also, make sure to buy all the gambits available in Robin Aster. Now, change the active party to Balfiar, Fran and Bosch. Go to the item shop and buy 99 Phoenix Down, 99 Antidote, 99 Eye Drops, and 99 Potions. Next, unlock everything on the license board for Balfia, Fran, and Bosch. Okay, now head into trial mode. 
Level 99 and Satan Grat is not only enough to finish off everything that the game has to offer apart from Yizamat, it's enough to absolutely decimate trial mode, allowing us to easily get through the higher floors for amazing gear. Also, I just want to apologise, I do not have footage for all of these steals. Because the amount of time it takes, I've been doing a lot of it on remote play with my Vita while I'm out of the house, which means unfortunately I wasn't able to record some of them. So, on stage 30, for the love of god, steal the thief cuffs from Gil Snapper. This makes life so much easier because this item doubles your steal chance and allows you to steal more than one item at a time. Next, on stage 43, steal a mage power Shishak from Palakant, which is the second best heavy armor headpiece in the game. Also, steal Minervia Buster from him, which is the fourth best light armor in the game. And as you'll notice, I got lucky and got both at the same time, because yay, the RNG didn't screw me once on this playthrough. Amazing. Okay, next on stage 45, steal a Maximilian from Vishnu, which is the second best heavy armor in the game. On stage 49, absolutely steal three ribbons. Now, this gear alone is amazing, but we can do so much better. So let's continue on, shall we? On stage 60, steal a brave suit. This is the best light armor in the game. And if you equip the diamond armlet, open the chest here and you can get assassin arrows. These are the best non-elemental arrows in the game as well. Now, on stage 81, steal a circlet, which is the best misty karma in the game. We don't have anybody who can use this yet, but I'm going to save this for Ash later on, because I always make Ash a white mage. Now, on stage 85, steal a renewing Morian, the second best light head in the game, well sorry, light armor headpiece in the game, but unfortunately it is the best that we can get currently. We can't get the best from trial mode after all. Okay, next up on stage 89, get the Grand Helm. You can get this on stage 90 as well. I just prefer getting it on stage 89 because, well, it's before stage 90. Now, on stage 90, get the Grand Armor, which is the best armor in the game. Oh, and the Grand Helm is also the best heavy armor headpiece in the game as well. And last but not least, on stage 95, get the Lordly Robes. This is the best Mystic Armor in the game. Again, this is for Ash. Now, if stage 95 is too hard for you, then just settle for the Glimmering Robe from stage 84, which is the second best Mystic Armor. Now, when the stars align and you finally get all of this, your characters will look like this. You can now proceed into Bujerba and go to the Lushu Mines like an absolute tank. And it only took over 100 hours according to the game clock, but because of all the resetting that this takes, it's closer to 200 to 220 hours, depending on RNG luck. I personally spent about 210 hours recording for clips, but my luck was truly horrid. And because you guys murder me when I don't include the actual event we get overpowered for, enjoy the Lusu Mines. So, we have the best weapon in the game by a mile, the best armor and accessory in the entire game. All the monographs, since you should have more than enough gil at this point to buy them, we're max level. We have the license board fully complete and enough LP to complete the second license board later on when you unlock it. And finally, we have a contract with the devil because of all this RNG luck we needed. All of this before we have a complete party and about two hours into the story. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I need to go see an exorcist to remove these unlucky spirits from me, and maybe a psychiatrist for the fact I did this overpowered series for a fourth time. But hey, 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. It helps tremendously. And if you're new to the channel, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified for all my future content. Finally, for those who wish to help support the channel, then consider becoming a member or using my Amazon affiliate link. All links are down below in the description. As always though, thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you soon.